All right, we're going to do the Revit Green Utility Shed. And of course, the first thing that we have to do is that we have to open Revit. So we're going to go to All Programs. We're going to go down to Autodesk. And we're going to go to Revit 2020. And we're going to wait a minute. And it's going to come up with this screen and you're going to tell it to run. It may ask you to register and if it does ask you to register, then go ahead and use your BISD email address and register and then just do the 30 day trial. And we're going to wait. And the Jeopardy music on my phone was a great idea, but it doesn't start up very well. So there we go. Now we want to do new. And we want to do an architectural template. It's going to be really important to pay attention to all of these teeny little steps because things just aren't going to work well for you if you don't. Now the first thing that it wants us to do is to click on here and right click and rename. So rename. And this is going to be the floor. And notice it's highlighted. I don't have to backspace or anything. Floor. Do we want to rename the corresponding level and views? So we have level one, level two there. And we're going to say yes, always yes. And notice that it changed it to floor here. We want to right click, rename. When I double clicked, it actually opened the tab. Now I'm going to name roof. And enter. And yes, we want everything to change. So there's roof. We don't need to have roof right open open right now, and it doesn't show it to you, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. So after we do that, it wants us to put in a wall. And let's be sure that we're on the floor and go to wall, and we're going to do architectural. And it wants to make sure that chain is deselected. That is selected. That is deselected. And by default, we have the straight line, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to click once. Double click, double click, because I'm, I'm ending and starting one. That's why I'm clicking twice, and then click once, because I'm done, and hit escape. And that finished our floors, our walls, yes, something. So at this point, it says that we have a couple of ways that we could select all the walls. We could select one wall. First of all, we have to go over here to modify and click on that. Select one wall. And I can hold down the control key and select another wall. And it says, um, hover over an adjacent wall and press the tab key. So I'm hovered over tab and it selected everything. Well, I thought it did. Tab. Anyway, okay, control, control. We get the little plus up there. We've got them all selected. And and the modify walls tab is highlighted. So modify walls right there. That tab is highlighted because they are all selected. And we're going to delete all of them using the delete key because it wants you to learn a lot of different ways of actually doing this. So, I apologize for that little click. I laid the headset down and I thought I already had it paused, but I did not. Now, method three, oh, method two, the rectangle tool is what we're going to do first. So under the architecture tab, select wall again, architectural, and then we're going to choose the rectangle in the draw panel. And there's our rectangle. That's a pretty easy way to oh, click. There we go. And we want to press the escape key so that we get out of that and we're not drawing another rectangle. We can go to modify here and it wants us to delete all walls. Click Control, click, 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 delete. All gone. Now, chaining walls. So we want to select the wall tool again. 
Architectural, and this time we want Chain on it. So we click once at the beginning of the wall and move the cursor to an endpoint and click again. Now we don't have to double click. So that is the beauty of chaining them, which I think I would, that would be my preferred method. Hit escape. Now, before proceeding, we're going to check the orientation of each wall to make sure that it faces the outside. I have to go up here to modify and make sure that those arrows are on the outside on each one of them. And they are. <clears throat> and if they weren't, all we have to do, if you click on the arrows, they go to the inside, but these are supposed to indicate the outside of the building. So if any of them were on the inside, you just click them and it would move them to the outside. Make sure that you define that because you're going to define a wall and part of it is going to be an exterior surface and part of it will be an interior surface. So now we want to change the dimensions on the tool on the our boxes. Now it wants us to right click in the context menu. Oh, we don't have to do that. We press the escape key so that we are now in modify. To enforce a dimension, we're going to select the end wall perpendicular to the dimension. So we have that there. And a blue temporary dimension will appear. And we can only edit temporary dimensions. So when we click in there, oh, first of all, it wanted us to make sure that the square grips are set on the outside. So I'm going to zoom in here and you'll notice let me get over here and zoom in and you can see that if I click here it's got the dot there in the middle now it's on the inside and we want it on the outside. So we need to make sure that both of these are dimensioned from the outside because we are putting in exterior dimensions and this one is on the outside as well. And you just click them to go through. So we could do an on center dimension, an inside dimension, or an outside dimension. Now we'll zoom out. I always want to hold down control to zoom. That's not the way we zoom. We just zoom with the wheel. So We've come out here, and this is supposed to be 12 by 16. So this would be one of our 12 foot walls. So if I click here, I can change this to 12, and I don't have to put feet. It's going to automatically assume it's feet, and it's going to change it, and it changed the um, wall opposite it as well. So we're adding permanent dimensions in both directions. And so when I click here, Again, though, we have to make sure that these are on the outside and not in the middle or on the inside. There we go. Now I want this one to be 12 feet. No, I wanted it to be 16 feet, didn't I? Yes, I did. I click it again, and it's 16 feet. Now it wants us to make these permanent dimensions, and I have this little icon right there. And when I click it, it turns into a permanent dimension. So I'm going to click here so we get the other one. Click that, and now those dimensions are permanent, and they are going to continue to show. Now, under Elevations in the Project Browser, click on any one of the elevations, north, south, east, or west. We'll just click east. It's the first one. And there's our little house. And we're going to select the wall in elevation view and notice that the height is 20 feet, a little bit taller than we want for our green building. So it says you will modify the height of the wall later in the tutorial. Notice that the floor level and the roof level appear in the elevation. So floor, roof, and can be edited in the elevation view by selecting the elevation value and editing the value. Select the roof elevation value and change it to 8 feet. 8. Enter. There we go. Now we want to view the cube and the steering wheel. So we're going to choose the view tab in the ribbon. View. And select 3D view from the create panel. Create 3D view, and there we are.
there's our cube. So you can also experiment with the view cube and the steering wheels. So we can move it around a lot like Inventor. You can click on right, spin it around, look at the top, go back. So experiment to get used to it. And there we go. We are just rocking and rolling through this tutorial. Now we want to change the wall height. So when creating walls in Revit, the wall height will automatically be the default of 20 feet. The wall height can be modified to the desired height using any one of several methods. Two methods follow. Method one is select a wall. All right, I have the east elevation selected, and it's telling me that when I select the wall, I'm going to see a properties palette. Well, guess what? There's no properties palette showing over here. Okay, so we're going to go back over here to actually the view tab and the user interface. And you'll notice that properties is not selected here. And when I select that, then it'll show me some properties that I want to know about. So here we go. We got a base offset. We have got a top constraint unconnected, 20 feet. We can change the unconnected feet from 20 to 8. So let's change that to 8. Enter. Oh, there we go. But I think that's only one wall. Or change the top constraint from unconnected to roof. So let's control Z that. Let's see. Okay, it could be unconnected and we set it at eight feet or we can go here and we can go up to level roof and then it's constrained to the roof. So we're going to open an elevation wall. Let's go to another one north. There we go. Select a wall and we can drag the blue arrowhead at the top down as well and you either perform the same change for each wall independently or select all the walls together and change the properties simultaneously so we want to change the remaining walls to eight feet so we can go to the south view which is way over here and way there we go we can take it down to eight we can click this one and we can drag it down to eight we didn't even have to be on it. Okay, now all of our walls are eight feet. Our next instruction on step eight says open the floor level floor plan. So I'm going to go down here, floor plans, double click on that, and we're on the floor level floor plan. Under the architecture tab, select floor from the build model. It places you in the sketch mode. So architecture, floor, And it places us in sketch mode. So we can create a floor boundary by sketching the edges, but an easier method follows. We're going to create the floor boundary by selecting each wall of the building. Notice that when you select a wall, you can use the double blue arrows to toggle between interior and exterior face of the wall. In this case, the floor should extend to the exterior face on each wall. In the Properties palette, click the drop-down menu in the upper right-hand corner and select Wood Joist 10-Foot Wood Finish. So we are going to, in the Properties panel, which is where we are, there's a drop-down menu. All right, so in order to do our wall, we have a lot of different options. Boundary line, slope, arrow, span, direction, but we also have this one. Nice, pick walls. But our pink think line is oriented toward the inside and we really want it to be oriented toward the outside. So if I click this, now our line is on the outside and that is exactly where we want it. <coughs> okay. 
Okay, so now we have our floor and we're going to go over here to our drop down and we want to pick a wood joist 10 inch wood finish. So wood joist 10 inch ceramic tile wood finish. There we go. All right, now I need to click my checkbox to finish and you can see, looky there, it's got our wood floor. So now we're going to create a gable roof. Yippee. And it tells you to get online support. You expand to get started, expand essential skills, open modeling essential skill, and read the page and watch the embedded video. So under floor plans in your project browser, we're going to select the roof level. <clears throat> Save the project always. And we are not saving it there. We know that. Let's make sure that we're going back to PLTW and, oh, I haven't saved this project yet. Oh my gosh. That means I need to redo the video or give you all a sheet to remind you to do this. But it, well, it doesn't really hurt if you get to this point and don't do it. So we have got to navigate to the right place to save it. And that is going to be in the PLTW drive. You're going to go to your class period where your named folders are and put it there. And I'm going to put it here. This one is supposed to be saved as green utility shed underscore your initials. Save. Alrighty, and now we are on roof, as you can see right here. <clears throat> and the floor and walls are visible, shown in half tone, and they are positioned below the roof level. And roof options appear in the options box. Okay, so now we go to the architecture tab, the build and roof, and we have roof options here. And see roof edges identified when the defined slope as see, notice that the roof options appear in the options bar and defined slope text box is checked. So roof by defined slope right here, hangover. All right, now defined slope. We want the slope defined on the long edges, but not the short edges. And in this case, we are going to select pick lines and I'm going to pick this. We're going to want an offset, and our offset is one foot. So click one foot here. One. No, not seven. One. There we go. Now I click this line. Notice that it goes all over the place. It can let me to click the wrong place. Be sure you click the right place. And why is it all the way out here? That's because it has that one foot overhang. So now we're going to go to this one as well and click. That's wrong. Control Z. Okay. I'll try again. There. Ooh. Alrighty. So now we do not want defined slope on this side because we don't want that to define our slope. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Same thing. Got to click in the right place. And again, click in the right place. Okay, you can see that we have a little bit of a problem here, right? Our corners did not connect. So we can go up here, and this is our, I'm hovering over it, trying to get the tooltip, trim corners, and I can click here and here, and then I have a corner, and here and here, and then I have a corner. So I now have all the corners to my roof. All right, now we have our basic roof here. And if we go to mm, 
Okay, we were not quite ready because we haven't hit that check mark. First thing we want to do is we want to change this to wood rafter, eight foot asphalt shingle insulated. And then click on the green check mark. Would you like to attach? Yes, we'd like to attach the highlighted walls to the roof. Yes, we would. Alrighty, there is our handy dandy little house with our little roof on it. And it was only a little bit of a pain. Now we want to change the wall type. So we want to change one of the 12 foot long walls. And so we can select this wall. So I'm going to go back to the floor plan and I'm going to select this wall. And I'm going to choose exterior brick on metal stud. Let's see, exterior brick on metal stud. All right, it made it fatter. From the control bar, we can change the visual style to realistic. Okay, oh, it actually has it in the 3D view. Let's go to 3D. Zoom in. And down here, visual style, realistic. There we go. Let's rotate it around. Yeah, I'm really good at this, aren't I? Oh, there's our brick wall. It's coming into view. There we go. There is our brick wall. We have a brick facade. And now it says in the project browser, right click on level one. So project browser, right click on level one and change level one to floor and level two to roof, which we already did. I am so sorry. I was rereading you the instructions on the first page of the paper. All right, I am pleased as punch to tell you that that concludes part one of our project. So, thanks.